It took 10 years to film the eight Harry Potter films, so we understand why a lot of things changed during this time, including actors. But you'll have to watch this video until the end to know who had to be fired after being arrested. If you love Harry Potter as much as we do, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Today, we are showing you 10 Harry Potter actors who were replaced in the sequels. Voldemort After hearing everyone talking about him, we first got the chance to see the face of Voldemort in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. After being defeated by baby Harry, the Dark Lord finally got the opportunity to come back on Professor Quirrell's head. This is what made him a temporary horcrux. After trying to steal the Philosopher's Stone, he was finally destroyed by Harry Potter due to the protective power that his mother left on his skin. At that time, Ian Hurt didn't only play Professor Quirrell, he also provided the voice and the facial source for the parasite. However, when he was destroyed, it made sense that he had to find another body and looked totally different. This is why he was then played by Ralph Fiennes from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Don't worry, the actor did have a nose, but it was removed in post-production. And he is also actually not evil at all. Over the whole movie series, the young Tom Riddle was also played by Frank Delane at 15 years old, Hero Fiennes Tiffin at 11 years old, and Christian Coulson at 16 years old. And here's Voldemort's little secret. Ralph Fiennes admitted that he had to wear women's tights, a garter belt, and suspenders under his dark clothes. We'll feel less intimidated if we ever see him now that we think about this. Lavender Brown in the first movies, Lavender was just a random student in the background. We would probably think that she was just an extra because she never talked, but you could actually see her name in the credits. With the name Lavender Brown, the casting director had in mind that her skin was brown, and it was too hard to find a young actress with lavender skin. Moreover, it was their way to show a little bit of diversity with a cast who is mainly white. This is why in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the minor character was played by a black child actress, Jennifer Smith. But when the young witch finally got more attention, they decided to cast someone else. We understand that a girl who used to have a minor role was not ready for such a big role, but the filmmakers made a big mistake when they decided to hire a white girl instead, Jessie Cave. They could have easily found another black actress with more experience, and we wouldn't even notice the difference, but they went for someone who couldn't look more different. This is why they were accused of whitewashing. Even though the new actress was perfect for this role, casting directors seemed to think that people of color belong in the background while white people get more opportunities. However, they did make things a little better by casting a black Hermione in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Albus Dumbledore When we first met the principal of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, he was played by the amazing Richard Harris. Surprisingly, he first declined the offer to have a role in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. But his granddaughter told him that she would never speak to him again if he didn't take this role, so he finally agreed. And we think that it was one of the best decisions of his entire career. Harris looked just like the Dumbledore that we all imagined when we were reading the books. Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 72, two years before the premiere of the second movie. He was suffering from Hodgkin's disease, a type of lymphoma. He was replaced by by Michael Gambon in the following movies. As the kids' movies became darker, it made sense to replace the happy Dumbledore with a more serious one. But did you know that Sir Ian McKellen from Lord of the Rings could have had the chance to play this role too? But he said that Harris described him as passionless, and he didn't want to take the place of an actor who disapproved him. During his youth, Dumbledore was also played by Toby Regbo, as we can see in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallow. And we can't wait to see what is going to happen to him in Fantastic Beasts. The Crimes of Grindelwald, as he will be played by Jude Law. Grip Hook Stanislavski said that there are no small parts, only small actors. But Warwick Davis proved that you can be a small actor in the best way and have a big role. You probably remember Griphook, the goblin we met in Gringotts Wizarding Bank in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. He was the one who took Harry and Hagrid to vaults 713 and 687. At that time, he was portrayed by Vern Troyer, who is famous for playing Mini-Me in the Austin Powers films. But what you might not know is that he was 
voiced by Warwick Davis, who played Professor Flitwick in the same movie. However, later in the movie series, the filmmakers wanted a completely British cast. This is why Troyer was fully replaced by Warwick Davis in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Isn't it weird to see an actor play two really different roles in the same movie? But with such heavy makeup and a different voice, we have to admit that we never noticed it. And we can't find a lot of actors who are only 3 feet 6 inches tall. This is why his wife, his daughter, and his son also played goblins in the Harry Potter series. Don't forget that your difference always makes you stand out, and this is how it can become your greatest strength. The Fat Lady We barely saw her, but she was so memorable that everyone remembers her. She was a portrait who guarded the entrance to Gryffindor Tower and asked for passwords before letting anyone in. We don't even know her real name, so we hope that Elizabeth Spriggs didn't take it personally when she was cast in the role of the Fat Lady. And she wasn't really overweight. That's probably why she was renamed the Pink Lady in one of the video games. It's true that we don't know what we have until it's gone. That's because when the Fat Lady was ruined, by Sirius Black, she was replaced by Sir Cadigan, and people really started missing her. But in the same movie, she was also replaced by Don French, who finally gave her a personality and portrayed the character with a more humorous side. We all remember the scene where she broke a glass with her voice, but there is something else in that scene that only the biggest Harry Potter fans noticed. There was a painting of a man that looks like Lord Voldemort dancing to the sound of her voice. It is just hilarious to see him in this position. We know that it is probably not him, but what has been seen cannot be unseen. We'll think about this every time we see the movie. Helena Ravenclaw The ghost of the daughter of Rowena Ravenclaw, also known as the Grey Lady, used to be a minor character in the first Harry Potter movies. She wasn't even named in the first book, but J.K. Rowling said that she was the ghost of a tall witch that Harry and Ron saw. However, she did get a little more attention in the first two movies. At that time, she was also played by Nina Young. They later offered the role to Kate Winslet from Titanic, but her agent turned down the idea, probably because it was not really a big role. It is in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows that the Grey Lady really became an important character in the story. She was the one who stole her mother's diadem and hid it in Albania before she was murdered by the Bloody Baron. By the way, you have seen this character too, as he is a ghost at Hogwarts. Isn't it weird to spend the rest of your life, or actually your death, with someone who ended your life? By the way, do you know how you can become a ghost? Only wizards who are afraid of death can live an impoverished version of life instead. They are mostly people who had some unfinished business in the form of guilt, regrets, or attachment to the material world. Being a ghost isn't really a good choice, don't you think? Bill Weasley this character used to be so subtle that we have almost forgotten about him. Even though he was mentioned in the first movies, we only had the chance to see him on one picture of the Weasley family in Egypt, in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. At that time, he was portrayed by Richard Fish, but he later got a bigger role in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and was portrayed by Donald Gleeson. By the way, did you know that his father is Brendan Gleeson, who plays Mad-Eye Moody? This is why his favorite line in the film was Mad-Eye's dead. Another great coincidence is that in the books, you can read that Bill looked like Mad-Eye Moody when his scars were as bad as ever. And did you know how he got those scars? He was badly injured by Fenrir Greyback during the fight at the Astronomy Tower. Since Greyback was a werewolf, the wounds were cursed and they never healed, which explains the scars on his face. However, he was not transformed at that time, so they were not contaminated, and Bill did not become a werewolf. However, he did develop a liking for very rare steaks. His injuries are also what convinced his mother that Fleur was the right one for him, as she stayed by his side no matter what. Tom no, we're not talking about Tom Riddle. There was actually another Tom in the Harry Potter series. This man was the landlord and barman at the Leaky Cauldron. We first met him in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone when he greeted Hagrid and Harry. At that time, he was played by Derek Dedman. Tom was shown as a man with a straight back, but it suddenly changed in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban as he was suddenly a hunchback. This character was played by Jim Tavare. With such a big difference, many people started wondering if they were actually too 
two different people with the same name who happen to work at the Leaky Cauldron. It's also rare to see two people with the same name in one story, but some people think that J.K. Rowling intended to have two characters named Tom. That's because Tom Riddle hated his name as it was too common and he wanted to be independent. He probably didn't like to meet the other Tom when he first visited Diagon Alley. It could be one of the reasons why he decided to call himself Lord Voldemort. The writer is such a great perfectionist that she probably thought about that. Harry Potter we know that Harry Potter was portrayed by Daniel Radcliffe, and don't worry, you're not crazy. He did play this role until the end of the movies, but the actor was a little too old to play himself as a baby, so they had to hire another actor. You have probably heard people saying that the baby in the first Harry Potter movie was actually Albus Severus Potter in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. After all, 10 years after, it would totally make sense that he would be 11 years old. But we are going to prove that this is nothing but a fake story. First, baby Harry wasn't only playing played by one actor, but by four actors. In the first film, he was played by three unnamed babies, the Saunders triplets. The funniest thing about it is that one of them was a girl, so it is possible that the baby in the movie was not a boy. And Harry Potter's son, Albus, was played by Arthur Bowen in the last movie, so there is no link between the two families. Moreover, the baby in the viral picture was actually the actor from the last movie, Toby Papworth. We think that only one thing can explain this crazy theory. Rita Skeeter has been writing fake news in the muggle world. Vincent Crabbe So what happened to Crabbe in Harry Potter? He used to be Malfoy's best friend, and then he suddenly quit Hogwarts and was replaced by someone else. Where did Jamie Waylett go? He wasn't simply not interested in this project anymore or replaced by another actor. He was actually fired from the movie series. That's because he was arrested in 2009 for growing illegal substances in his mother's home and pleaded guilty. Then he had to pay a fine and was sentenced to six weeks in a young offender's institution. Two years after, he was arrested again for taking part in the London 2011 riots because he was seen holding something dangerous and also stole something. This is why he was charged with two years in prison for violent disorder. At the same time, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was released and we could see a new actor, Louis Cordes. Actually, he was still supposed to play Blaise Zambini, but we can still say that he took Crabbe's place in the movie. This is how another actor ended up passing away in the room of requirement in the last movie. And it left anyone who read the book really confused. Do you agree with the choices that the casting directors made? Don't be shy to answer in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear what you think. And that's it for 10 Harry Potter actors who were replaced in the sequels. For more stories like this, make sure you watch This Is How the Cast of Harry Potter Should Have Really Looked. Thanks for watching and see you next time.